This is a very common theme all throughout dog life. I talk about it on every episode and I'll continue to talk about it on every episode, every training class, every training session, every seminar, every presentation, every post on the internet. The bottom line is human behavior is the biggest variable. When you change human behavior, you change dog behavior. It's just that simple. I'm never gonna come up with another answer or a variable or a metric that's more important than the human behavior, the human choices. Once those choices by the human are based in legit education, legit dog behavior, and positive training, force-free training, things go better, no matter what the issue is. So remember, the dirty little secret in dog training, it's all about human behavior. The dirty little secret in dog training is that it has very little to do with the dog. It has more to do with us. You can't predict what's going to happen, but you can prepare how you'll respond. So you want to make sure that you're focused on the environment and human behavior, and then the dog learns really well. Behavior's in the environment, not in the dog. If you really want to help dogs, it's not about one film. It's about film every day, it's about content every day. So it's the ripple effect. It's not just one time. You want to just bombard culture with the proper info. All right. Um, we now are going to teach you guys about... Yeah? You think so? All right. You, you agree? So we're going to teach you guys about the leave it cue. And you're okay. It's okay. Good girl. Yeah, just give her a little back rub. Just give her a little, little rub down, okay? So the leave it cue replaces no. Hey, stop. Cut it out. Dog name, dog name, dog name, dog name. So when you guys say your dog's name and they look at you, they've essentially done what you've asked. So if you need them to come over to you or you need them to stop doing something, you don't really want to use their name because that's not enough information. All right? So the leave it cue, we're going to start with the easiest way, which is food in your hand. Close your hand, place it on the dog's snout, and say, leave it. And as soon as the dog stops attending to it, they win. Yes, take it. Okay? So that's the easiest form of leave it. Leave it. Yes, take it. So whether the dog gives up and sits, or even if they hear a distracting sound and they give up, you mark yes and say take it. So let's do some leave it. Closed hand on the dog's snout, say leave it one time, and wait the dog out. And when they stop attending to it, mark yes and say take it. One time, guys, wait the dog out. So make sure your hand is closed, okay, hon? So you want to have a, you want to have a fist like this. Leave it. And then wait for Mabel to stop licking your hand. Yes. Or looking at your hand or attending, and then you say yes, take it, okay? Well, you may need something. Yes. Leave it a little bit more attractive than what you have. Because okay. dogs are going to have to, yes, dogs are going to a trump. So put that yes. away. So you see you'll have a whole new dog with those treats. Just put them right on her nose and say, yes. leave it. Leave it, leave it. Go. Leave it. Yes. Yeah, there you go. New dog, new treats, new dog. Yeah, yes, he left it. So yes, take it. Leave it. Leave it. Yes, take it. Leave it. Leave it. Good weight, Gracie out. Good weight out. So wait her out. Wait her out. Yes, yes, take it. Nice. Good eye. Good eye. Nice. Okay, guys. Let's finish up that leave it. Leave it. Yes. Good. Wait, maple out. Yes, take it. Nice. Good eye. Okay. So if you guys um, jump ahead and you do leave it from an open hand or off the floor, watch the video. Next week, we're going to talk about open hand, leave it, and off the floor. But again, you know, your leave it cue is going to be your all-around disengagement cue. After it's okay, it's my most popular phrase. I say it all the time. Leave it, right? Because you need your dogs to stop attending some, to something. The reason why it's such a good cue is because you can generalize it to anything in any context. Leave it means stop attending to it, smelling it, walking towards it, looking at it, licking it, leave it. It's a great cue. Uh, today what we're doing is we're going to meet uh, little Bella. She's done two sessions with me, little bulldog mix. We think she's a bulldog Boston Terrier. Her mom, Marianne, fantastic dog guardian. 
uh, rescued her, um, I think about three, four months ago. And like I said, we did two sessions, an initial session for two hours. And then we did a follow-up session uh, last week with little Ralphie, who's going to be with us today helping out um, Bella and her dog-dog socialization. Bella is four years old. She is um, a rescue dog, and she's had kind of an unfavorable past, bounce around a lot in different houses. Bella's really sound in terms of cognition and training. Her main issue is dog-dog relations, so that's what we're going to be working on today. We're going to be working on another greeting with her and Ralphie. So they've done one, it went well, and now we're going to do our second, and then as we go forward, we'll probably, you know, recruit some other dogs, but have access to Ralphie today. Um, so that's who we're going to be using for her continued socialization. And uh, last time it went well, and I anticipate it to go even better today. Yep. Chest, tight. Chest tight. Keep it on me and the dogs. Oh, we need a little wheelie there, and it'll be good. So Laura's going to come out with Ralphie. Has she met with or played with any dogs since? Uh, okay. Maybe talked at a, you know, I was at right. a distance, but no Got play, you. no close. Okay. All right, good to know. Hi, little kid. How you doing? You got to recalibrate for the treat. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll just I'll just mark and pay her um, as soon as she sees Ralphie, and then what Laura and I are going to do is the six and three, nine and twelve, where we yes, there we go, yes, okay, yes. So if you can get Ralphie situated, I'm going to come in. Yes. Yeah, just hold, oh, there you go. Just hold his collar and his, yes. Yes. So stand over him. Yeah, just, <laughs> yes. There you go, there you go. Hold his head. Yes. You're okay. All right, let's walk. Let's walk. Yes. So I'm going to have you go in front. Yes. Yes. So she's bouncing right off the marker, which is good. There were a couple of times she self disengaged. Yes. So see how I mark and pay, and she bounces right off that marker. And uh, we'll, when we get to the church grass, we'll try again for more of a intimate greeting. <laughs> We'll just hang out here for a bit. So she's disengaging on her own. She's choosing to go find some, some scent, which is good. Yes. Bouncing off the marker. Yes. Now, you know, a lot of times, especially with bulldogs, they have a, they have a vocal play style. They're very physical. So that could be misconstrued as being aggressive. She doesn't have a bite history though with dogs, right? We don't really know. Right. She jumped up and Somewhat snapped at my niece. But your niece isn't a dog. No. Right. right. So, right. so, but she could just be jumping and mouthy because she's excited, excited. too, and she right. doesn't have, you know, she has a mm -hmm. stunted socialization history. You know, she doesn't have a right. lot of foundation in mm -hmm. people and dogs. So, it might just be that. It could just be a dog who doesn't really. It's, it's confusing. There's no, there's been no guidance. Right. Right. So, um, fortunately, Ralphie has got a lot of guidance. Um, and uh, he's got a really good mouth and uh, we'll just yeah we'll just keep you know and if, if nothing if we don't get them to play together when we go in 
I got the room split. We'll keep Ralphie on leash because he can jump the fence like me and you can drink water. <laughs> He's crazy jumper. All right. So, and then we'll just see how, you know, how he... Yes! Try a little round and round. Yes! A little barky man. Leave it? Yes. Okay, so again, I really like that. Like I gave her a leave it, she turned right around and she was like, okay. So if she was super stressed or super fearful, she may not turn around. She may, right? And if she was super stressed and super fearful, she may not want to even walk up to him. She may be like, uh-uh, I'm scared. So, and I'm not getting, yes, I'm not getting anything from her that tells me she's fearful. Again, she just might be like really over the top because she doesn't have a lot of experience with dogs. And then there's some dogs who have tons of experience with dogs and for whatever reason they haven't really learned to read very well like body language and the people haven't given the dog any directives yes so you know all of that is in this little stew here that we're trying to, yeah. you want to go see ralphie again yes right but again i mark and pay she bounces right off So she disengaged for a flash on her own, which I marked and paid for. Leave it. Yes. So again, you know, all of that is really normal. You see, Ralphie's kind of the same way. Like he's another dog who's very, yes. He's another dog who's really social, but he likes dogs so much. Sometimes he gets a little frustrated when he can't make contact. Um, so look, she's choosing to go, right? Yes, right? So dogs vote with their feet. So she's saying, hey, let me go back there. I like that. Yes. The other thing I like is, yes. We got very close proximity. We're talking about less than two feet and she's not freaking out. Yes. Right, so she's showing attention, but she's not barking, growling. Yes. Okay, and we got direct eye contact. So very good signs, yes. When dogs are really stressed or afraid, they either retreat or they, they stay on their ground and they bark, they growl, yes. And a lot of times when you get this close and you've got direct eye contact, dogs staring at each other, you know, they can get a little upset. So this is all really good. I look for ambivalence and happiness. Like I like you, I'm here, but yeah, I'll go smell something. When it's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, that's a little too much intensity and if it's oh my god i don't want anything to do with you that's obviously not good either yes wow. good that job that was almost a awesome. kiss <laughs> good girl and she solicited that she walked to him here you go bud oh where's yours huh yeah where's my cookies yes okay so ralphie did a little play move like i like you i'm gonna do a little dance make a little love get down tonight yeah, hi. You're very cute. Yes! We're gonna pay for the motorcycle. Disengaged on her own, which we like. Yes! Pay for that motorcycle again. Yes! Pay for that motorcycle again, right? Stop taking food for a sec, a little stressed by that motorcycle. Yes! And one of the problems that people get into is they don't do a warm-up walk. They just let the dogs off leash in the yard or in the facility and yes. And what happens is, is that there's no introduction really. So the safest way to have two dogs greet that I've never met is on leash. Go for a walk, see how it goes, you know, because that greeting pattern is very important. Yes. Oh, you like her? She's a good girl. It. Yes. Oh, good boy. Oh, you know your verbals. Yeah. You see how she kind of sits a little weird? 
Yeah, I wonder if she's got a little back end issue there. Yes. Yes. Right, right so we're, we're like, leave it. Yes, so we're six inches nose to nose, no stress. I didn't see any lip lifts. I didn't yeah. hear any growling. So I give myself a little bit more of a buffer because they're just starting to become buddies and we want to make sure that it goes well. Good job. You know, a lot of this too is that you have to be patient. Far too many people want to rush it. And then once it's rushed and it goes bad and it tips over in play, now you're, well, now you got to repair debits as opposed to, you know, putting in, putting money in the trust account. All right, we could walk a little bit. Come on. Let me go ahead. Uh, I think she's okay now that we've had a, a little greeting, but you might want to go ahead. Yes, I think Ralphie's more excited than Bella is. Such a big girl now. How are you doing? <laughs> yes. Good girl. That's Martin. He likes doggies. How are you? Yeah. What are you doing? You gonna help out little Bugsy Man today? Yeah. You didn't get any less cute, I can tell you that. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. So so don't laugh. I want you to move back. I want you to move back. Yes. Laura, shut that gate, please. Yes. Not the hand off there. So again, we'll just do some remedial counter conditioning with her, because a lot of times cameras are, you know, viewed as weird stuff. What's so. wrong with the you? <laughs> yes, you got a good auto sit, huh? Yeah. Hi. How have you been? Good girl. All right, so one of the things that we've been working on in puppy kindergarten class is the leave it cue and the touch cue. So Jojo, where are you, honey? Jojo has gone through her puppy kindergarten programs and done quite well with those cues. And in class, we use the uh, you know treat in the hand, right? And we say, leave it, yes, right? And so that's the easiest way to do it because you have a definitive distraction or a definitive uh, stimulus that the dog can leave and we you know graduate them to leave it open hand yes oops leave it yes okay so we graduate them to an open hand and then we also graduate them to off the floor leave it yes good job leave it yes and again, we pick that up because we don't want the dog to eat stuff off the floor or the ground that we really need them to leave. Um, so we pay from our hand. The other way, and usually the most prominent way that leave it is used, is when the dog is attending to something and you want them to leave it. So for instance, right now, Jojo is, yes, I'm gonna market pay her for the camera real quick. So when she's attending to something on the ground, I can say, Jojo, leave it, yes. And as soon as she stops attending, I mark and pay. So that's usually the the most prevalent way leave it is used in the real world because you need your dog to leave something that they might be checking out go to leave it yes and i throw in those verbal prompts a little kissy sound to motivate her to come over yes girl so that's how we use leave it and you'll see that in you know tons of videos you know tons of film that we do where we just ask dogs to leave stuff and the reason why leave it is good and not no or hey or cut it out or dog name dog name dog name is because you can generalize leave it to mean well, just stop doing whatever you're doing. Most people don't give their dog a treat after they say no. If they did, then no would have a reward for disengagement and it would actually work. 
but it's counterintuitive to people, right? So, Jojo, leave it. Yes. So again, if I have guests over there, or maybe I put down some bags or something, I didn't want the dog to mess with it, I can use leave it. And a dog like Jojo, who's been learning leave it since she was a little tiny pup, for her, it's just a normal response to stop attending to something. Jojo, leave it. Yes. So you could see it's literally like 99.999% reliable with her in here. If we're outside and there's something that's more attractive than what's on this floor, it might be a little bit more challenging and that's where having those prompts tacked onto the end of it, those little sounds really help motivate the dog. Jojo, leave it. Yes, good girl. All right, smart kid. Yeah, are you smart? You know how to do stuff? Yeah, you a good girl. How are you? You're such a cool looking dog. You don't look like any other dog I've ever seen, ever. Here's the main thing for timeouts. Jumping on people. You got a micro and a macro. The micro is you walk away, right? So if the dog walks up to you and jumps, walk away. You don't get me. Or, too bad, and then macro means you're getting timed out for 10 seconds. The other one is table surfing and counter surfing. Paws go on a table, it's not, hey, cut it out, get off. It's too bad, right away, I'm timing you out. Because I don't want the dog to get the steak knife. I don't want the dog to eat something. I don't want the dog's paws on the table ever. That's a never ever, okay? Now with jumping on people, we also teach alternate behaviors, meaning I can teach wait, sit, and then if I want, I can let the dog jump on me, or I can pay the dog a treat, or I can pet the dog on the head, or I can toss the toy, okay? We also teach touch, especially for little kids, right? Touch, now the dog's touching the palm, not jumping. So between timeouts and teaching alternate behaviors, you end up teaching the dog really quick if you're consistent with this on what works. Okay? Yeah. You could. You could pick them up. You could gently take them by the collar and, you know, lure them. Um, it really depends on the dog and the environment. Um, I can time a dog out on leash. Right? I can just shorten the leash and say, too bad, we're standing still. If I have to, come here, come over to this asphalt driveway where there's no grass. We're going to stay right here for about 10 seconds. The dog's like, wow, I don't get the smell. Sorry, buddy, pulling too much. Right? Sorry, you lunged out after that rabbit. And I gotta teach you not to do that. That means freedom's over right now. We're gonna go over here and just chill. Okay, so you can always, time out is about removal of access to what the dog wants. Macro means you go into a containment area. Micro means I just remove something that you want, okay? Um, typically 10 seconds is your minimum. If you're up to like, you know, a minute and you've timed your dog out five or six times, you have to ask yourself what's going on in the environment. Did somebody leave something on the table? Is that friend or relative constantly getting the dog riled up and they keep complaining the dog's jumping, <laughs> right? So you have to look at the environment if you have a lot of timeouts. We're here, we're gonna be filming this session with a dog named Bugsy. Um, met with Bugsy once for an initial session. He is a um, Staffordshire Bull Terrier and he had originally met with two other trainers. One trainer was uh, a pain trainer and tried to do some stuff. You guys met with the first trainer and that was the trainer who was a pain trainer, right? He was more like wanted to startle him and scare him. And, scare, yeah. and how, did, how did that go? Um, as soon as he, we'd only had Bugsy for maybe a week or two and as soon as he came in, he came into our home and we had Bugsy on the leash. Um, he then said like he couldn't, he didn't even put his hands out, nothing like wouldn't greet him, said he was just gonna let, you know, yes. let him know. What was it? Like he wanted to be dominant kind of, like he needs to not say hello to me type thing. So Bugsy then of course barked at him the entire time. Then he, one of our things was about him stealing. So he actually had us throw something on the floor for Bugsy to get. He then took like this bag of like coins and had me, while Bugsy was looking at me, throw, the throw it on the ground. And Bugsy then started barking at me, which had never happened before. And then once he saw that bag come out for the remainder of the yes. time, he, uh, so he threw, 
So you threw the, you threw the bag of change. You scared yeah. your dog, and then he started barking, barking, barking. Then lost he actually it. went into where we've never seen it again. He was actually cowering and hiding and shaking, and then jumping up and barking and lunging. Then he would go and hide, and he would shake, and then he would get up and bark. Like it was, he was totally around. Yes. He was from one extreme to the yeah, other. Yeah, it was. It was like it was I mean, horrible yeah, to say. Touch. Yes. Horrible. And the dog freaked out on him and went and hid and didn't want anything to do with the guy. So that wasn't good. And then they hired a positive trainer, but that positive trainer didn't set up the introduction correctly, made some kind of crazy noise outside with his trunk and getting stuff, and he freaked out, couldn't work with him at all. And then you hired another trainer who was a positive trainer, but how did that go? Uh, we tried a different approach. Uh, we had him introduce uh, introduced to the trainer outside of the house, met him at the trainer's vehicle, and he wasn't being very responsive. He was a little curious as to what was going on, and uh, as we walked towards our house for our so the, interview and discussion... Yeah. The trainer had, uh, me and the trainer went in the house first, had him, had Bill stay outside with Bugsy to like calm him down a little bit. As soon as Bugsy came into the home on the leash and saw the trainer sitting at the table, he was on his hind legs barking, barking, barking. On the now you had mentioned something when we did our original session that that particular trainer also went to his trunk of his car. He was in his trunk, like getting treats into like a pouch, I guess. We walk, he said, just walk up with Bugsy. Bugsy walked up, wouldn't really approach him, kind of was just like sniffing around. And the trainer was throwing treats. Um, I don't remember, I don't think he was really like talking to Bugsy. He was kind of just throwing treats. Right. Bugsy wasn't taking any food at okay. that point. Um, then, like I said, we walked. Bugsy and then already, already, like we started to walk. I walked with the trainer ahead of them. Bugsy already started to like bark a little bit, get a little bit like apprehensive. What's going on? He was defensive of, I guess, us to yeah. an extent. By the time so we got we, to the house, all that turned off. Oops. Then Sorry. we put him behind. We had a gate set up in our home. By the time that trainer came, we put him behind the gate. And every time he heard the trainer's voice from the other room, or if any of us moved. If he had calmed down, back to, he actually knocked the gate off the wall. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, quite, quite, um, he looked terrified. He actually didn't even, he, it was frightening, but he actually, when you looked at his face, he, was he looked scared. scared. Like his eyes were like, The entire time that we had Bugsy, yeah. we've only seen uh, this extreme reaction twice. Was when we had these two trainers. Too bad. Unfortunately, he wasn't responding well. Oh, I'm going to let you slide on that one. <laughs> you know, you got to get your toy, you little stinker. So then they came to me, and we met here. We set the environment up. Bugsy was a little apprehensive to begin with, but then through counter conditioning and just letting him be a dog and sort of chill out, he ended up by the end of the session in my lap, giving me kisses and hugs. A great dog, so we, we did well. Um, they have been completely, his people, Bugsy's people, they have been completely transformed in terms of their confidence. Um, basically, they said he's like a different dog because we're approaching things positively and we understand how the environment affects his behavior. So, really, really big win in terms of just that dog and that family, but also, you know, for positive training and just letting them know, like, this is what you need to do when your dog is stressed or this is what you need to do when your dog is watching something you marking yes and treating him in counter conditioning so really really good stuff and uh looking forward to seeing them again should go well we're gonna have to take some precautions with martin and the camera new person new you know new part of the environment we're gonna want obviously martin to be in here so we're gonna have uh, you know some challenges there, but again, as long as we mitigate the distance properly, and Mark can pay him, we get moving, and we don't you know uh, flood him with the camera, so nothing in his face, and we just take our time, much like we do with any stimulus that the dog might be fearful of or stressed about. So that's how we're gonna approach our session today with Mr. Bugsy, and it should go really well. Just come out real quick, and then see what happens. Yeah. Yes! Yes! It's okay. Okay, so I like the whining. That's usually a sign of anticipation. Um,
gonna let him smell this out. Something's got him going. Leave it. Yes. Okay, he's taking food. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's looking good. We're gonna do a couple more. He's taking food. Other way. Yes, other way. No, hide, 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 hide. <laughs> Martin's getting molested with the snout here. Okay, let me see you again. It's okay, it's okay, you're okay. Hi. You okay? Uh huh. Well, he saw. Yes. Yes. No, no, the other way. That way. Hide. Yeah, thanks. Yes. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. Hide. Yes. All the way. Hide that a little bit more. Yeah. Hide more. Yeah. Go out of view. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm having to go out of view and then come into view real quick. I'm paying him for each one. So he's disengaging on his own, like he's deciding, okay, even though he knows the dog is over there or maybe over there, he's not obsessed with it, which is good. Right. Well, we're also, you know, we're, we're, we make sure we have enough distance, you know? Come out, stay. See, I'm gonna wait until he notices. I'm not gonna point him out. Yes. It's much more powerful that way. Yes. Okay, we're gonna try to round around. Follow me, Martin. Yes. Yes. Okay, hide, hide. You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. So I'm letting him get her scent. Right, so I'm not stressed about the pulling. I want him to get the scent. Come out, let me see you. Yes. Hide. Okay, I'm gonna walk, I want you to follow me. When I get to the church grass, I'm gonna go way back, okay? When I go to the church grass, I'm gonna go way back, and then I want you to just walk past, all right? And then, Take a left into that alley and hang there. Then I'll walk past you again, and then you'll follow me. Okay, easy, easy, good boy, easy. So now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna go, we're gonna all go back there and Laura's gonna walk by, we'll get another sighting. We'll get another sighting. Laura, wait. 
we'll get another sighting and then she'll go into this alley and then she'll continue to follow us. Good boy. Good job, buddy. You need a bag? You go, you're good? Yes. 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 So we're going to get a lot of duration here from the yes. Okay, so that's a lot of stress. I'm not, I, I'm not thinking that this is fear, yeah. but he wants to go see that dog. Oh, yeah. Right. But I have to be careful because yeah. it could change. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there's another dog coming across the street. You're okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna get this opportunity for this dog across the street, the two dogs actually. You're okay. pay for that car sound. We're going to get a lot of duration here. Yes. 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 You're okay. Yes. 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 It's okay. You're okay. You're okay. You're okay. All right, we're going to give him a break and just go back here. Just let him smell it out. So typically when we have when we have that amount of whining and anticipation, it's usually reserved to frustration, not fear. Yeah. But again, it could it can flip. You know, if the dog gets there and all of a sudden they feel fearful, they could bite. So I just wanna be very very careful with that. Oh, here's another one. Here's another dog. Okay. Today we didn't even need a test dog, right? I'm gonna wait for this dog that's potentially he's gonna see. Yes! 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 Uh huh. Understood. Understood. Okay, let's walk. Come on. Okay. Your environment dictates the criteria, right? And this is something that a lot of people are confused about or don't even know, right? Environment dictates your criteria. But you need to learn about that because that's how you're going to become efficient as a trainer, whether you're a pro or whether you just have a dog and you know, you're trying to get things accomplished like a way to the corner or a recall. Your environment dictates your criteria. Now, can you have the same criteria that you had in the house as you do outside? Sure, you can have that same criteria, but you're going to have a harder time reaching it outside because you have environmental contingencies, scent, other dogs, people, traffic, sounds, etc. So just keep that in mind and give up the idea of perfection. Perfection is a lie. It's about better percentages and it's about focusing on the environment and your behavior. Coming up on the next episode of Dog Life, the touch cue, hand targeting, 
super important. And when the dog comes and gives your hand a little yes, pop or investigate, you mark yes and pay. Nose to toes with the treat. We want to get most of our downs from a stand if we can. Yes. Right? We don't always want to go in from the sit because if we go in from the sit, your sits may become downs. Yes. She disengaged the first time and then this time she, yes, disengaged. The second approach, she gave a little kiss, which was nice. Yes. You're watching Dog Life on the Urban Dogs YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next episode. Take care.